Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for clicking on today's video. For today's video, I'm going to be doing a budget with me for the month of August. This morning, as I was thinking of doing my monthly budget with me, I'm like, I cannot believe that we are in the month of August. This year has gone by so fast and I can't believe we're almost at the end of the year and I have zero dollars saved up. I said it right. It's embarrassing to say, but it's zero dollars and zero cents into a savings account. That's very disappointing for me. If you are new, hello, hello, my name is Delia. I am on a journey to being debt free. I have quite a bit of a debt and I've been trying to pay everything off. Then things happen, I stopped working and the debt went up a little bit. Not much, but it still went up. I'm still in debt. Hopefully after I'm done paying that debt, I can start saving for the future. This is my real life, that's where I'm at right now. I wish I had all this extra money where I can be just counting and saving up. I am going to be a little more strict and I sometimes say that, but then things happen. Life is not perfect and with budgeting, at least for me, I can never have a perfect, a perfect budgeting month where I can just save a lot of money in one month. Hopefully things will get better now that I'm starting to work. I can pay more of that debt off. But let's get started with this August budget with me. What I like to do is I always like to print a calendar. So I printed it here and I'm just going to be putting the paydays. That's what I like to do first. Short story about me. I've been budgeting for about two years. I noticed that it was working for us. I'm in my late 30s. I was able to save money and I was able to pay off some debt. And I'm like, wow, this is working. So let's keep going with it. I decided to share my budgeting journey with you all. I've I've had my highs and lows and I've been sharing all of that with you all. So, I mean, things have gotten better. I was in a lot of medical debt, so we were able to pay that off. Don't get me wrong, we have paid off some debt, but I don't have money where I can just like, some people would say I don't have money to just throw up in the air. Let's start with the paychecks first. 3, 17, and 31. I'm highlighting it this way because this is the first paycheck of the month of August, August 3rd. And with this income, I'm going to be able to pay off the payments, my bills that are due after august 3rd so that's why i'm highlighting it up to the 16th then i'm going to highlight it in orange what i'm going to be paying on the 17th is another paycheck then there's another paycheck on the 31st so what i did is i just put paycheck 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 i have to figure out what i'm going to be paying with what paycheck for example our home mortgage it's due on the first of the month so that's going to be paid off with the last paycheck of the month of June. So I'm not a budgeting expert and what I did right now is I wrote down all of our bills. I'm still in this journey to, to organizing how I'm going to be distributing my income. With the last paycheck of the month of June, we paid off our mortgage, electricity, groceries, gas. Then we have the new check that's on August 3rd. We're going to pay internet, car loan, cell phone, trash, water, car insurance, groceries, and gas. It might sound like a lot but the expenses are much less than paying off our mortgage. So that's been paid off. We're just gonna worry about the month of August, which are these bills here. Obviously they're not all due on the third, but I always like to pay them off as soon as I can. So right when I get paid, I try to pay them off on Friday since I don't work Friday. I go, for example, to our water company, and then I save up for our car insurance. We go do our grocery shopping. We pay, we fill up the tank with gas or most of the cash is gone by next week. Uh, we have a bit left, which is our groceries, which is what we save up. I like to withdraw an amount that we can have for two weeks of groceries. So that is, the internet bill is also due on the first days of the month. This is where I get confused. And if you are watching this video, if you are really good with budgeting, please help me out friends. What do you do with when there's three paychecks in a month now for this month of august it sounds like it's perfectly it sounds as if there's going to be an extra check and that might be a possibility but usually when it's three checks in the month what ends up happening is that the second check i save it to pay off for example our mortgage electricity grocery gas but then sometimes i feel as if that check needs to be 
to pay off the following two weeks and then that final check I have to pay off the first bills that actually sounds right I'm hoping I'm not confusing you so let me go back with the first check we're gonna pay all of mostly up most of our bills right water bill um, internet car loan now with the second check because there's only two paychecks there's only two bi-weekly paychecks in a month so with the second check I have to save it for our mortgage and now once we get to the end which is the 31st I have to start saving to pay off the first uh, bills of the following month so that's wrong what I wrote here which is mortgage electricity groceries I have to save the second check to pay off the mortgage which is due on the first of the month so the third check I'm gonna need that money to pay off again once again internet which is due on the first days of that month I'm sorry if I confused you there I even confused myself I didn't even know what I was doing so for the month of August let me go back again and I'm hoping that I have made this clear where you can understand where I am going with all of this let me just put orange here because all these bills are paid with this paycheck here the green here I paid our mortgage electricity groceries gas with the last paycheck of the month of June okay I already paid that now we are in the month of August we're gonna get paid on the third so I'm going to pay internet car cell phone trash water car insurance groceries gas so I'm gonna pay most of our home bills most of our fixed expenses our home bills are gonna be paid with this paycheck for the 17th of August we're gonna get another paycheck okay I'm gonna save that money put it in an envelope it's gonna be for our mortgage electricity gas groceries the second part of my bills once we have another check which is the last check of the month, which I don't even consider it a third check for the month of August. On the first days of September, we need to pay our internet. We need to pay our car loan, our cell phone, our trash, car insurance, groceries, and gas. So if I end up staying with a paycheck, with what funds am I gonna pay our first bills of the following month? since that last paycheck was so early on. I'm hoping you understand where I'm going with all of this. Please let me know if you do things differently. How do you budget when there's a third paycheck in a month? I don't really consider it a third paycheck because it always falls on the last days of that month. And with that paycheck, we need to pay all of our expenses of the following month for the first week. If you get excited when there's third paycheck, I don't really pay much attention to it because to me, I don't really consider it a third paycheck. Again, please let me know if I'm doing this wrong. If you do it differently, if you do save up the whole paycheck, let me know. Whenever your bills are so much, you need the money to pay off all of your bills. Okay, now let's do our monthly budget here. I'm gonna put in our income source and now for this month of August, I'm going to have an extra income, which is the income from my work. I will be including that as well. I am no longer working full time, so my paycheck has been cut in half. Let me fill all of this in and I will get back with you. These are my monthly bills that we pay for the month. What I did is I made a list of all the bills that we have to pay and the money that's left over, which sometimes it's not even much, if there is money left over, I put it towards our sinking funds, which is haircut savings, emergency, extra clothing, and toiletries. So what we do is, this is the actual amount that we have to pay. What I do is I round, I round to the nearest dollar because it's much easier for me to manage my expenses and put the money in the envelopes. When we get paid for the month, with the first check, we pay off these bills and the check in, the second check pays off the remainder of the bills. So the total amount is 1450 for each paycheck. Sometimes my husband gets paid just a little bit more, but whatever it is that he does get paid more, we leave it in the bank. Sometimes it's not even that much, maybe $80. And if there is money left over, we end up spending it to, in eating out, which I guess you can say like a guilty pleasure that we do. We sometimes just grabbing some ice cream for my son, fast food or pizza we take that money out of the extra money that he has but I don't like to withdraw more than that because I know that if it is like $20 extra we save it in case our next check is a little bit lower so let's say that the next check is 1380 so those $60 that he got paid extra that month prior to that 
we just left it in the bank and that that's where it helps us out moving on with my monthly budget i wrote in the income so my husband gets paid 1450 1450 for the two checks of the month then i get paid for my the whole month i get paid 1116 for the whole month working so i am working part time so those two checks add up to 1100 and $16 so our total income for the month of August is gonna be four thousand sixteen dollars which which it really does sound like a lot but once we distribute that money to the places where they it needs to go it doesn't leave us much left over but before I move on and adding up the total I wanted to share a quick story so my husband went to work and when he came back he told me that a friend asked him if he wanted to join a condina for those of you that don't know what that means I wanted to explain to you what that means and I wrote down like a definition here in the notes it's a Spanish word for a money pool where a community of about 10 people come together to put money together and have an arrangement to share it amongst them taking a turn by borrowing the money until it's fully paid so I told my husband like we don't have money left over for you to join this condina and also I don't see the point where all this money that's going to be borrowed to you you have to pay it back I mean there is a point for someone that's going through an event where they're having an emergency for example they don't have any money to pay their rent so let's say that the condina is going to be a thousand dollars every week everyone is going to pay 250 dollars out of these 10 people that are coming together every week everyone's going to pay 250 dollars so in 10 people that is a thousand dollars let's just say these 10 friends come together they're going to put the 250 dollars that week in a cookie jar so all that money is going to add up to a thousand dollars to know who's going to get the first a thousand dollars in this money pool what they're going to do is they're going to draw numbers so usually they have like a little cup with the numbers from one to ten so you're going to draw a number and let's say you got the number one so you're going to get the first a thousand dollars you're going to you're in that rush right you have to pay your mortgage or your rent or your car broke down so you have a thousand dollars and you're going to use that to pay off whatever it is your emergency was now the next week you have to pay that money back so for this period of time you're going to have to pay 250 dollars each week until you have paid off the thousand dollars that was borrowed to you so every week the 10 people come together they put that money in that cookie jar and then you give it on to the next person that got the number two so that person is going to get a thousand dollars everyone is going to have to pay back that thousand dollars so even if you already got number one and you spent the thousand dollars you have to pay it back every week you're going to come together to put 250 dollars until you have paid everyone the thousand dollars so i told my husband what's the point of let's say we got number one and we borrowed the thousand dollars every week you have to pay it back 250 250 250 250 you one thing we can't afford it we don't have the extra funds to pay that money back you're going to get the thousand dollars and you're going to end up paying it all back so i'm going to do my own little condina my own little tanda and i'm going to save at home so if i have money left over i want to really stick to it and put money in a box an envelope save maybe fifty dollars and then um, we'll see how much money i have saved up in my own little condina i don't have to pay it back to anyone so i told him you know what let's just try to do it at home our own little our own little money pool we'll save it here and then we'll see how much we can save um i kind of explained it to him like it doesn't make sense to get money borrow a thousand dollars and then you're going to have to pay it back right away. Like every week you're going to have to pay 250, 250, 250, 250. You have to pay it back. If we do it at home, we're going to be able to save the money that we have. And we know that that money is going to be used to pay off a debt or to use it to wherever we want to use it for. I don't know if that makes sense. If you have ever participated in a money pool, let me know in the comments below. I really want to know if, if you have and what you used it for. Okay, let's add up these numbers. I have my fixed expenses here. Variables. I put variable as groceries because we could always change it to a different number. Gas as well. Like, okay, don't drive that much. I mean, it is. Don't drive that much. I mean, yeah, I guess. Um, I don't know. Just don't do too much, too much grocery trips. Just do your one grocery trip and do all of your driving that one day and not use too much gas, I guess. I don't know. Credit card, we can always change it. If we have more money left over, we can apply more to the credit card. Sewer, that one we do have to pay 80, which I could have put it as a fixed expense because I'm trying to save up all of our sewer, all of the funds 
to pay off yearly. And then Hulu is $20, which that one's not variable, but that's okay. I didn't have a lot of room to put it on here. So I wanted to add some of my expenses on this side. So let's add these up first. That's gonna be $900 plus 70 plus 126 plus 40 plus 40 plus 40 plus, I put one. I'll just put 279, so that's 280 plus 450 plus 120, that's $2,026 plus 520 plus 180 plus 70 plus 80 plus 20 equals 2,896. Okay, if I was just to add up my husband's income, which is the 1,450 times two, that's $2,900. So if I was subtra to subtract 2,896, I end up with $4. So do you think I would have money, extra money to join this condina? Like we don't even know, I don't even know how much the amount was going to be of this money pool, but we were not gonna have money extra for that. Okay, I'm not including my income, but obviously I do have we do have our income. So how do I do this? 2,986. I'm just gonna put here 2,986. That's including all of the bills. I won't put anything there. That's 2,986. So we're gonna have some money left over. But how much? Let's find out. Our total is $4,016. And then subtract the bills that we're gonna pay. We're going to have $1,030 left over. So the plan for that, I'm gonna put it, put it here for savings. Um, snowball, that's what I'm gonna call it, snowball because I know that I'm not gonna be able to save this money. It's all gonna go towards debt. So I'm gonna put $1,030. That's how much money we're gonna have left over and I don't even wanna put it down here. Total budgeted, unless I put 2,986 total spent, it's gonna be everything. All right, I guess I could put 4,016 and then the total and we're gonna have left over $1,030, which that is gonna to go towards our debt. So whenever I'm doing my cash stuffing, it's not like I'm gonna have $1,030 left over because I get paid uh, bi-weekly as well. So that's going to be two paychecks to add up to this. We didn't have money saved up for clothing or for back to school supplies. I have to pay Target and it's $350. I should have put it here somewhere, but I should put it here for debt. Target, 350 and cents. Whenever I get paid, I'll pay our Target credit card a little bit more towards our credit card. And then if I can, I mean, I'm, I have to, right? I said I wanted to start my little condina or my little money pool and I'll create like a little envelope for that to start putting the money in there. My 100 envelope challenge that I was doing, that didn't work out. <laughs> I needed the money and I can't save money if I have all this debt. The little money that I had put in there, I had to take it out and pay off debt. This is what our August monthly budget looks like. Ah, yay, yay. I think I like my little setup that I'm doing right now. Instead of using Live Rich Planner, which I'm selling, let me know if you are interested in it. I am selling it very cheap. Obviously, I have to include the shipping. I'll probably add it on my Etsy if I can. I'll probably take a picture and put it on there. But I remember, I didn't write on it, I just wrote on it to put the August stickers. So if you are interested, go check out my Etsy. I'll have it for sale there. And it's gonna be, I think under $30. It was not something that I was looking for for my budgeting setup. I didn't like the layout. And it's more for planning. I don't do too much planning, so. Check out my link down below if you're interested in buying that planner, which is new. Yeah, that's pretty much it, friends. Thank you so much for watching today's video. May God bless each and every one of you all. I have some high hopes for this month and for the end of this year. Hopefully I'm able to pay off more debt 
and save a little bit. I don't want it to be the end of the year and me not have saved anything. I feel so embarrassed. Me being a budgeting channel and on this budgeting journey to pay off debt and not having any money saved up. It's embarrassing. I don't even have a thousand dollars saved up for an emergency right now. Well, friends, take care. May God bless each and every one of you all. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.